It's obvious that Ayano has a family. She has a mom and dad as well as other relatives. However, what you may not know is that this family's lore goes a lot deeper than it may seem at first. In this video, we'll be attempting to explain the Aishi family lore to the best of our ability. So, let's get into it. The story of the Aishi family dates back to 1780, which marks the year that the first Aishi was born. Something to note is that this individual was not born with any conditions. This means that the first Aishi was a completely normal person. Anyway, the first Aishi was born in 1780 in a country that isn't Japan. They also weren't born with the last name Aishi either. It is also said that the first Aishi physically resembled Ayano. Pretty goofy one could say, but it works. Some other things that are known about the first Aishi is that their parents were in their 20s when she was born and had a hero dare type personality which is likely similar to the heroic persona seen in Yandere Simulator. The first Aishi met their senpai when they were around 16 years old in 1796 and fell in love with them. Some unknown person told the senpai that the first Aishi loved him, and he returned her feelings. The two formed a relationship the following year in 1797. It was also in this year that both the first Aishi and her senpai immigrated to Japan. They ran into some problems however, as they didn't speak a word of Japanese and had names that the locals couldn't pronounce at all. To solve this, the two of them adopted Japanified versions of their names. Once they had learned enough Japanese to be able to speak to others, the first Aishi and her senpai decided to be known as husband and wife, as it would be the least complicated way to introduce themselves. This led to them both adopting the last name Aishi, which is why the first Aishi is called that. At around 20 years old, the first Aishi had her first child, who was a girl. This individual was the first person born under the Aishi name. Some other facts about the first Aishi is that they were not named after a blade, they probably killed someone in self-defense at some point in their life, and she ended up meeting an Info-chan-like person. As of this video's creation, the year and age of death has not been revealed. This will probably be revealed in the future, but who knows. Since we don't really know anything about a majority of the members of the Aishi family, we'll skip to Ayano's great-grandparents. They are notable in that they were Ayano's first relatives to move to Baraza Town. Once this happened, a basement was built in their home at the request of Ayano's grandma. Ayano's great-grandpa was the one who built the basement and didn't question why the hell he was building it. Speaking of him, it is theorized that he was kept in either a warehouse or a cave in a nearby forest. God damn. Anyway, Ayano's grandma kidnapped her senpai and the two had a child, who is Ryoba. She used the basement at least once, like that isn't evident already. Ryoba and Jokichi are perhaps the most notable members of the Aishi family, especially the former. In 1988, Ryoba bumped into Jokichi Yudasai in the hallway on their first day of school. She immediately fell in love with him as he was the boy from her dreams. Throughout the next year, Ryoba tried to build up enough courage to talk to Jokichi, admiring him from afar. If you've played 1980s mode, then you probably know where this is going. Anyway, fast forward to 1989 and Ryoba found out that Sumiri Saitozaki had a crush on Jokichi. In typical Yandere fashion, Ryoba killed Sumire in the bathroom, disposed of the body, and got rid of all of the evidence except for a single drop of blood. This drop of blood was enough for the police to treat Samiri's disappearance as a murder and attract the attention of a journalist. From this point forward, Ryoba eliminated 10 other girls that got close to Jokichi. Some of them were killed while the others were eliminated non-lethally. Sometime later, Ryoba was going to confess to Jokichi under the cherry tree but ended up getting arrested. A trial happened where Ryoba described the journalist as being quote, a dirty pervert who enjoyed leering at schoolgirls and a fame-seeking yellow journalist. These accusations, along with her manipulation skills, allowed Ryoba to be declared innocent by the judge. Ryoba got away with murder. How nice. Due to the attention that was on her as a result of the case, Ryoba decided to confess to Jokichi in a different way. What do I mean? She kidnapped him and kept Jokichi in her basement. Unlike the previous woman in the Aishi family, Ryoba decided not to mind break Jokichi as she felt kind of bad for him. Despite this however, she kept Jokichi in her basement until he was guaranteed to not run away nor leave Ryoba. Once this happened, the two got together and eventually married. A couple decades later in 2005, Ryoba gave birth to Ayano at age 34. The reason why Ryoba waited until her mid-30s to have a kid is not yet known but will be revealed in the true ending of Yandere Simulator. 
Let's talk about the condition itself that affects all members of the Aishi family. It's not known exactly what they have, but the Aishis are affected by a condition that makes them quote, depressed, emotionless, and incomplete. They are all born this way with one symptom of this being none of them crying after birth. The only thing that cures an Aishi from this is finding their senpai. Each member of the Aichi family is affected slightly differently by this unknown condition. For example, at least two members of the Aichi family, Ryoba and Ayano, have felt significant pity for their own relatives. This is especially evident with Ryoba as she chose not to mind break Jokichi due to her feeling slightly bad for her dad. What's funny is that the story of the Aishi's condition was originally passed down from generation to generation, but eventually became a fucking joke. I mean this in that they don't take the story seriously anymore. One notable tradition that the Aishi family has is naming their children after blades. Three notable exceptions to this tradition included the first Aishi, Ayano, and Ayato. If Ayano had a kid, their name would follow this tradition. Why is this name rule a thing? It's because all of the Aishis want to give their kids names that seem pretty, but in reality have another meaning or purpose. Think of this as each Aishi's first name being a double entendre. Another tradition involves their senpai. After an Aishi and their senpai marry, their senpai changes their last name to Aishi. This is somewhat grounded in reality as in Japan, there is a practice called Mukuyoshi. This is a tradition where a man marries a woman and is adopted by the woman's family, choosing to take her family's last name. It's likely that this could be the case with the Aishi family, but don't quote me on that. The Aishis tend to not be that close with other family members. After finding a senpai, they usually don't interact with other Aishis. It is likely that Ayano hasn't met a majority of her relatives as a result of this. No one is on bad terms with each other though. Yandere Dev has stated on Reddit that whenever members of the Aishi do meet with each other, they would normally talk about how to get away with murder. It would make sense if this is the case. With that being said though, this doesn't seem to be the case for every member. Yandere Dev doesn't believe that Ryoba's mother ever helped Ryoba with murder or similar things. Regardless, each member of the Aishi family has their own personality and aren't too close with one another. How close they become with each other depends on their said personality. Let's just say that the Aishis have a pretty weird relationship with their senpais. If enough time has passed since getting with them, an Aishi wouldn't need to be next to their senpai in order to feel emotions like normal people do, whether they are with or away from their loved one. In addition to this, a senpai is capable of influencing an Aishi's personal development. One example is related to killing people. If a senpai exclaims, stop fatally hurting people or I'll hate you forever, the Aishi could be taught to not kill people. As for the opposite, if a senpai doesn't say anything or is too afraid to say anything, the Aishi's development would not be influenced by them. The loss of a senpai before the ability to fully feel emotions has been fully developed can have very dire consequences on an Aishi. They are said to feel like they permanently lost the capacity to hear music, see color, and feel warmth. This, in turn, leads to the Aishi falling into a very deep depression and coma-like state. If the senpai is lost after they fully developed their ability to feel emotions, however, the Aishi would not fall into a coma. They would still feel an extremely deep sense of loss and pain that is far beyond what a normal human would feel at the loss of a loved one. Basically, they'd feel very large levels of emotional pain from their senpai's death. Depending on how an Aishi has developed following getting with their senpai, what kind of senpai they have, and how their senpai died, a lot of possible scenarios and reactions to the latter's death can happen. What do I mean? Take this as an example. Some possible reactions to a senpai's death can include entering a coma-like state, killing everyone around them in a fit of rage, or living a normal life without the senpai. As mentioned before, depending on the senpai's cause of death, an Aishi would react differently. They would likely not do anything if their senpai died of illness, and if their senpai was murdered, the Aishi would attempt to seek revenge. Still, all of this depends on a lot of factors such as the ones previously mentioned. There are a lot of facts about the Aishi family that don't belong in any specific section, so we'll just lump them together. For anyone that is wondering, the name Aishi is a play on words. The I part translates to love, while the she part translates to death. In a literal sense, the name Aishi means love death. As for their appearance, Yandere Dev has always imagined every member of the Aishi family to look nearly identical, even if it may seem kinda goofy. Another fun fact about the Aishi family is that a majority of the females tend to give birth at a pretty young age, with the most common one being age 19. 
This was mentioned earlier in the video, but Ryoba is a notable exception to this as she waited until her mid-30s to have a child. Even though a majority of the Aishi family is kind of irrelevant to the main story of Yandere Simulator, Yandere Dev does imagine that Ayano's sixth great-grandmother wore a bloody kimono and carried a knife at her at all times. Who knows what the other members of the family are like. Anyway, apart from Jokichi Yudasai, the only other characters to be aware of the Aishi bloodline are the journalist, Headmaster Kocho Shuyona, Megami Saiko, Saisho Saiko, Ichiro Saiko, and possibly Infochan. The first three view the Aishis as a threat to humanity, while the latter three don't view them as threats. Something that was mentioned in my 100 Yandere Simulator Facts video is that if an Aishi Senpai was a female, they would somehow find a way to continue the Aishi bloodline. This has not been revealed as of this video's release, however. With that, we have arrived at the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the like button and to subscribe to the channel. Feel free to watch this video next.